Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining. My name is Usuk Kwon. I'm a PhD student at UC Berkeley working with Jan. Today, I'm more than happy to present our recent project, VLLM, Fast LLM Serving with Page Attention. This project is co led by me and Joan here and our advisor, Jan. As we all know, we are in the era of LLMs. The most innovative applications today, like ChatGPT and Copilot, are powered by LLMs. Moreover, the, the whole field is still rapidly growing. Every week, we see new models and new breakthroughs that continuously expand the potential of, of LLMs. Certainly, LLMs are opening up a plethora of exciting opportunities. As a result, We've seen a surge in applications and startups leveraging LLMs across various fields from chatting and programming to business operations. And an essential part of these applications we focus in this talk today is serving the LLMs. Given these applications all heavily utilize LLMs, the performance and cost of the applications largely depend on the speed and cost of serving LLMs. Therefore, how to serve LLMs fast and cost-effectively is becoming a tremendously important problem these days. However, we observe that serving LLMs is surprisingly slow and expensive, even on the best of breed hardware. Due to the large model size, LLMs often run on high-end GPUs like NVIDIA A100. Despite that, a single GPU with previous systems could only serve a handful of requests per second, even less than one, one request per second for a 13 billion model with moderate input sizes. This means you will need a ton of GPUs if you actually build production scale services using LLMs. Obviously, this has been a critical pain point for many large and small companies. To understand the problem, let's recap the inference process of LLMs. First, the user provides a prompt consisting of multiple tokens. The prompt goes through the model, and then we get the next token to the prompt. In the next step, we feed this, new feed this new token back to the model and get the second output. And this process is repeated until the sequence either reaches a predefined maximum length, say 2,000 tokens, or generates a certain token for stopping. This is basically how the inference process of LLMs works. In the inference process, LLMs have a unique component, which is often called KV cache in the literature. When processing a new token, the model actually needs not only the representation of the current token, which is DO in this particular example, but it also needs the representations of all the previous tokens. So these states of previous tokens should be kept in memory, and they are called KV cache. The same for the next step, except that the input token in the previous step, which was the in this example, was newly appended to the KV cache. As such, the KV cache dynamically grows, and it also shrinks when the sequence finishes. Here, the key insight in our project is that Efficient man management of the KV cache is crucial for high throughput LLM serving. Let me give you an example. Let's say we run a 13 billion LLM on a 40 gigabyte GPU. The model parameters take roughly 26 gigabyte of memory. In addition, a small fraction of memory is reserved for workspace. The rest of the memory, which is about 20 gigabyte uh, in this example, can be used for the KV cache. Our finding is that previous systems use KV cache inefficiently and thus significantly limit the number of requests that can be batched together. In contrast, our solution VLLM manages KV cache much more efficiently and thereby allows much larger batch size with the same amount of memory. And importantly, the increase in batch size translates to the increase in throughput and hence reduces the cost per request. So what are the memory inefficiencies in the previous systems? 
This is a snapshot of the KV cache with, when using a previous system where we find three types of memory waste. The first is internal fragmentation, which means the slots uh, are located for a sequence but never used. This happens because we don't know, the, uh, we don't know in advance how many tokens the model will generate. The second is reservation, which means the slots that are not used at the moment, but will be used for the sequence in the future. Here, the, the three slots in the middle are reserved because they don't store any token at the current step, but will store output tokens in the subsequent steps. This is another kind of waste. Finally, there is external fragmentation because different requests A and B may have different sequence lengths. According to our profiling results, the memory waste was significant. Only 20 to 40% of the KV cache space was actually utilized to store the token states. The rest of the memory was merely wasted for these three reasons. So how does VLM solve this? Our solution is basically to employ the old idea of virtual memory and paging in operating systems. As we all know, OS uses paging to reduce fragmentation and it uses virtual memory for efficient and elegant space multiplexing between, uh, between processes. And what VLM does are basically the same. It uses a similar kind of idea to resolve the fragmentation in the KV cache space and to enable efficient space sharing between requests. Specifically, this is enabled by our new technique, page attention. Let's dive into it. Okay, to begin with, we partition the KV cache into an array of KV blocks, just like paging. A KV block is a fixed side chunk of memory that can store token states from left to right. In this particular example, the block size is four, which means we can store four tokens in a block. On top of this, we introduce page attention, our new implementation of attention mechanisms. We find that the fundamental limitation uh, of the previous systems is that they require all KV states of a, for a sequence uh, to be stored in a contiguous memory space. This is useful convention in traditional DNA workloads where the input and output shapes are, are static. However, it turns out to be highly inefficient for LM inference where the sequence lengths are dynamic and unknown a priority. Page attention directly addresses this limitation. As shown in the animation, page attention operates on the KV states stored in non-contiguous blocks. Uh, and it efficiently patches the blocks located in arbitrary positions in the KV cache space. Furthermore, we virtualize the KV cache to logical and, and physical KV blocks. Let's see how it works with an example request A. Uh, its prompt is, Ellen Turing is a computer scientist. In the logical view, the tokens are stored in a natural fashion. They're stored in, in consecutive blocks where the order is preserved. In the physical view, on the other hand, the tokens in the same sequence may not be stored in adjacent blocks, and, the, and their order be, between the, the blocks can be arbitrary. And the mapping between the logical blocks to the physical blocks is stored in a new data structure called block table, which is, an, which is analogous to page table. Let's continue the example. Let's say the model has generated the next token end. The new token is first appended to the, to the last logical block. And using the block table, we also append the new token state to the corresponding physical block. The same for the next generated token, mathematician. And finally, if the last block is full, then we allocate a new physical block and store the token in the first slot of the block. Importantly, this means the block is allocated on demand as opposed to being pre-allocated like in the previous systems. So basically, this is how VLM manages the KV cache. So far, we've covered how it works for a single request, a single sequence. 
However, I believe you will be able to imagine how it's going to work for multiple request process simultaneously, since its, its underlying principle is, same, is the same as the virtual memory in OS. Let's quickly analyze the memory efficiency of VLM. First, VLM has minimal internal fragmentation. This is because the internal fragmentation only happens at the last block of a sequence. This means the, the number of the wasted tokens per sequence is bounded by the block size. In practice, we use block size 16 or 32, which means we store 16 or 32 token states per block. Uh, and this is orders of magnitude smaller than a typical sequence length. Therefore, the internal fragmentation is very small. Second, VLM does not have external fragmentation since all blocks have the same size. Putting these together, VLM only wastes 4% of the KV cache space. In other words, it improves the memory utilization by three to five times compared to the previous systems. This leads to significant increase in batch size and eventually the serving throughput. Okay. From now on, Juan will take over the rest of the talk. Juan? Okay. Um, Okay, hello everyone, this is Johan. <coughs> so just now, Wusu talks about how the page memory or the dynamic block mapping reduces the memory waste and improves the serving throughput, okay? And actually another big advantage of the dynamic block mapping we have in VLM is that it, it enables sharing. So uh, for, uh, for example here on the slide, the parallel sampling is actually a very popular sampling method for LLMs, which, which generates multiple output from the same prompt. So as shown on the slide here, we have uh, one input prompt, the future of cloud computing is, and we feed this one input prompt into an LLM and generate multiple sample output from the LLM. And in such a case, the computation and the memory for the prompt can be, sh can be, saved, by sharing, uh, can be saved by sharing it between the different parallel output samples. Um, so this scenario might be uh, pretty rare for a playing chatbot, but it, it can be very helpful for cases like LLM-based programming assistance, like the GitHub Copilot, which we all used for, for, coding, for coding. Like you can try to generate multiple, uh, multiple candidates and select the, the one you want. Okay. And so VLM can naturally support this decoding scenario and using its block tables. So we use, this, uh, we use the same prompt, the future of cloud computing is, as the previous slide, for example. And here we generate two parallel samples. So for the prompt part, uh, because they share the same prompt, these two samples share the same prompt, VLM will only do the computation once and store only one copy of the KV cache in the physical blocks as shown in the slides here. And because the sequence A and B has the same prompt, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, because they have the same prompt, we'll only keep one copy. But because uh, but both A and B, they still have the same logical blocks. So as shown on the slide here. And because each physical block can be uh, mapped by multiple logical blocks, I uh, naturally will keep a reference count for each physical block. So in this case, these two physical blocks have a reference count of two. And so as the next step, these two samples are began to generate the output, right? And these two samples, because they are different samples, they will sample for different outputs. Say here, the sequence A generates the word bright, and the sequence B generates the word interwine. And both of them need to write the newly generated KV cache for these new words into the physical KV blocks. And now we face an issue. So when sequence A wants to write to the physical KV block, it, it will check the physical KV block's reference count. OK, so it says, see if the reference count is 2, it, then it will reduce this reference count from 2 to 1 and do a copy on write and copy this physical block to a new block, and then write the, the corresponding KV cache of this word bright to this new, new block. And for sequence B, because it sees, okay, it checks, the, that physical, that checks that physical block and sees the reference count is one, it will directly write this newly generated word interwine into this physical KV block. And then the generation continues with this new newly generated block. So in this case, we can see that that except for the very last token block, KV block for the prompt part, all of the other token block, KV blocks for the prompt can be shared across both sequences. And this can greatly reduce the memory usage for the prompt part, especially when you have your prompt is very long. And can, this can also increase the throughput because of the like, memory reduction. And 
but and VLM does not only support uh, parallel decoding, and VLM also supports ma even more complicated uh, decoding methods like beam search. So beam search, uh, for people who are not very familiar with beam search here, so beam search is a decoding algorithm that is very popular for like machine translation to find the most accurate translation. And it can be also used in LLMs, say for example, if you use LLM for translation. And beam search is very similar to parallel sampling in the sense that the prompt part is also shared by different beams. So when different beams generate, this prompt part can be shared across different beams. However, beam search can, can be more, more uh, dynamic and more complex compared to parallel sampling because the different beams uh, can sh different beams can diverge from another beam. So for example here, the new beam zero and beam one are all from the original beam zero, and the new beam two are from the original beam two. So in this case, this part of the, of, of, of the KV cache can also be shared across beam zero and beam one. And the original, like beam one's KV cache can be just deleted. And then at the next time step, uh, the, the beam, all the beam search result looks like this. The B, so beam zero is from the original beam zero, and the beam one and beam two are from the original beam two. In this case, this part can be also be shared by the two beams, beam one and beam two. The, you note that the sharing pattern is actually very dynamic and can change this over time. And VRM dynamically supports, supports this via its uh, block-based memory management, the page, page memory, and the block table mapping. And this is, uh, for people who are familiar with operating system, this is like very similar for you for a fork tree. So it's like when you keep calling forks in your like operating system processes, and how does the OS memory, OS manages the memory, it's, it's very similar to, to this fork tree style. And, and this is also like, this whole sharing scenario is eff efficiently supported by VLM with, this, with the dynamic block mapping and the copy on write mechanism. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so to brief summary, to briefly summary, summarize, so how does page, how do page attention and VLM benefit LM serving? First, as Wusuk said, we can reduce memory fragmentation with paging. So this can reduce the memory waste and so we can fit more requests in the same batch so we can improve the throughput. And second, it's because of we can do more complicated sharing and we can further reduce the memory usage and which further boosts the throughput. And next, uh, let's dive a little bit into the systems architecture and implementation of VLM. So we will have, we have a, we build VLM as an end-to-end -end LLM serving engine that includes a front-end, distributed model executor, and scheduler. So we have a centralized engine that manages the block table, and at each iteration, it sends the memory command to the GPU workers. The cache engine in the GPU worker ac will actually allocate the physical blocks and then execute the model shards. And more specifically speaking, so VLM is a mostly Python project, but we do have some CUDA code for the page attention kernel. And we build on top of the popular stack of LLMs like Hugging Face and, uh, Hugging Face and PyTorch. And for distributed execution, we use Megatron LLM for the model parallel uh, decoding and use Ray for, the, Ray for the cluster management and the control plane communication here. And uh, yeah, this is the performance results when we are, when we first announced VLM, which we, are, we, compare, compete, we compare ourselves with, with plain Hugging Face, Hugging Face dot generate, and uh, another Hugging Face inference solution, Hugging Face text generation uh, inference. So compare with the most naive way of using LLMs, which is mo most of you might have used, basically download a model from Hugging Face and call model dot generate. We can achieve a 24x higher throughput compared to that naive method. And even compared with uh, Hugging Face text generation, in, in text generation inference, this TGI framework, it, because it doesn't have uh, page attention back then, we can achieve a up to 3.5x higher throughput compared to TGI. And yeah, and VLM is a open source project, and it's open source on this link. And it's, uh, as we said, it's mostly a Python project, so it's actually very easy to use. You can just pip install it, and you can just start using it. And the, the, uh, we have documentation, and we have got uh, nearly 7K stars. And yeah, for this open source project, uh, in the past several months, months, we have been working on I intensively on model support. I th we, we believe we are now supporting a very large set of the LLMs. Basically, most of the, I think 95% of the most popular LLMs are supported by VL VLM right now. And you can pick your favorite one and you start, start serving with VLM. And 
Our first successful story of VRM is actually before our open source launch. So we launched VRM on June 20th this year, and actually like two months before that, we, were, we, are, we have started serving, serving the Vicuna, the fam famous Vicuna model and the Ch Transport Arena demo with VRM. And it has been deployed till today, it's like for like about five months, and it's back end for Llama based models and many mostly for Llama based models, including Vicuna, Alpaca, Koala, and many more. And this demo receives uh, an average traffic of 40K conversations per day. And with VRM, we can re first reduce the total number of GPUs to serve by 50%. And even with like half of the GPUs, we can, have, we can serve 2X to 3X more requests per second. And, and this gain is only uh, achieved when we serve v serve VRM for a part of models, and if you use VRM to serve all of your models, and the gain can be more. And uh, as our uh, product keeps growing, we get many many adopters. So, so on the open source side, first we have FastChat, as we just discussed, and also we have uh, SkyPilot. So SkyPilot is another project we, here we, we develop at Skylab. So we use SkyPilot during our development, and also you can easily launch a VRM cluster. VM uh, server with SkyPilot. And also, we have many other like LLM, open source LLM frameworks like OpenChat, OpenInstruct, and Wizard LLM. They are all using, using VLM for, for inference. And we are talking to many companies and many companies, actually we haven't talked to some of them and they <laughs> automatically start using VLM. Okay, yeah, and uh, so you might say, okay, talk is cheap, show me the code. So this is, all of the code we can find on GitHub that these companies are using VRM. So, so we want to show you, okay, VRM is actually a very mature project and many people are using this VRM, VRM for their inference serving workload. And yeah, and more beyond of VRM, beyond of VRM, the, the open source project, uh, from a more, IB, more like a uh, massive perspective, the page attention algorithm has become the industrial standard. The all of the other like, uh, other inference frameworks like, uh, like, uh, like built by others like Fireworks or AI or, or our baseline just now, Hugging Face TGI and uh, the recent NVIDIA TRT LM, they are all using page attention in their, in their serving engine to, to, uh, to accelerate. And uh, uh, lastly, let me briefly dive into, okay, how you can get started with VLM. So VLM's API is actually very, very simple. So first we show a case if you want to use VLM for an offline batch batch inference, uh, for offline batch inference. So you can just import the LLM class from VLM and, and in initialize the LLM and feed, feed in the prompt, and that's it. And VLM will automatically batch all of the executions of all the prompt and give you a result. So you can feed as many as prompt as possible into this prompt list, and VLM will automatically handle the batching for you and handle the correct batch size and also manage the memory with page attention. And next, because we are a server, we also provide a OpenAI compatible server as a demo server. So you can launch a OpenAI server, uh, OpenAI compatible server with a single command, and then you can query the, uh, the API as if you are querying an OpenAI API. So yeah, so let me uh, briefly summarize. So in conclusion, VLM can improve the memory efficiency of, uh, of LLM serving by 2.5x to 5x by reducing the fragmentation and enabling the sharing with page attention. And VLM can outperform the state of the art by 1.7x to 4x in terms of the serving throughput. And we are building VLM as a vibrant open source project that supports many models and decoding methods. And VLM is getting widely adopted. So here we showed our GitHub link. Uh, you can check out our code and also our blog. This is, this is a very, uh, a good starting point for you to learn about VLM and the page attention technology behind it. And also, we recently, pub, pub, recently uh, uh, published our paper on, on in the SOSB conference. So if you want to dive more into the page attention work, so please take a look at the paper. And finally, uh, if you have any questions, you can go to join this Discord channel and, and just directly talk to us. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, have, very happy to be here. And thanks for listening. Yeah, five more minutes. Five more minutes. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I think so because those those RNNs. Uh, okay, so the question is about. Uh, Okay, there are many recent neural networks that are more like recurrent based, like RNN style neural network. Uh, can these page attention techniques still apply to those kinds of uh, neural networks? I believe the answer is yes. So because uh, even with recurrent neural network, you still need to manage the memory and you still don't know, okay, what the output length is. So you need to, like, like if you don't do page paging in memory, you still need to like reserve a big chunk of memory for like for those, uh, for like, every request and it will still waste a lot of memory. So in this case, like, I think paging will also help on the RN side. But, like, but obviously, like, a paging will help, but like, page attention will not help if it's not using attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the, the question is how we identify the, the memory problem. Uh, I think, okay, the project is started by just uh, building the LM serving system, open source LM serving, serving system from scratch because back then there was no one available in, in GitHub, in, in open source world. And then what I think we different is, I think the way we are different is that we focus on high throughput serving rather than like reducing the latency because that one was more like effective in in reducing the cost per request, and then like when you target the the high throughput serving, then you 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 wanted to so basically like, we wanted to increase the batch size, and then we found out the problem. Basically, when when you start implementing an inference server, once you reach that point, you will find this issue. Yeah, the, the, how you manage that memory is like all the existing methods will not be elegant enough and will waste a lot of memory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from yeah. hands-on experience. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, maybe over there. Yeah. Is there any implication for like cache or whatever memory? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, let me repeat the question. So the question is about, uh, w w like, are there any like cache misses or something like that? Yeah, I think the the answer is no. The biggest reason is because of the attention computations pattern. It needs to, uh, for the, to generate a new word, it needs to take a look at all of its like, previous words. So there's, like, at every step, all of its previous words need to be like, looked at once. So there's no like, misses, something like that. It's because of the computation pattern, so there will be uh, less the misses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, so you've mentioned the comparison with uh, the case TBI, uh, and you showed that uh, TBI is maybe uh, incorporating <coughs> Oh, okay, so the question is like, what is the current benefit of using VLM as TGI already incorporated the page attention algorithm, right? So uh, one thing we, we like to highlight is that TGI is doing pretty good job in uh, reducing the fragmentation using page attention, but they didn't like do a great job in like memory sharing. That part is actually more like uh, more complex to implement. So we have still have this performance benefits when the, when for the complex decoding methods like beam search. And also, uh, in, the, in the engineering side, I think we did a pretty good job to, I mean, we did a pretty good job on the optimizations or so on of the page attention. So we believe we are still have higher performance than TGI. Yeah, yeah. and we are on Apache 2 license. Yeah, they are uh, like very, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are an officer. Yeah, yeah. Great, thanks. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the question is about, okay, we talk about memory sharing for beam search and parallel decoding. How about some other cases like uh, sharing prefix across different requests? 
And yeah, that's a great question. Actually, we did that experiment in the paper, so it actually works. Yes. And yes, because there are some some small engineering issues, so we haven't merged that into the main branch, but we will we will do it like eventually. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, no, first one. Okay, I think, I think the maybe last question. Yeah. Yeah, hi, uh, so great work. Uh, I had a question you talked a lot about the throughput. What about latency? Is that true? Um, okay, uh, I think for the latency, okay, so the question is about we talk a lot about throughput and what about latency. So I think, uh, so it, at a very high level, we focus on throughput is because throughput is actually what reduces the cost. Because, uh, like, reducing the Latency, like if you reduce the latency at the cost of reducing throughput, it is actually not good if you are serving a very big, big, uh, big server, big, big like service for everyone. And uh, and more specifically, I think we can categorize the uh, the latency optimization techniques into two categories. And one category is like it's just pure optimization; it's optimized latency and thus increased throughput. And we will definitely incorporate these kind of techniques. Techniques, for example, like kernel fusion, things like that. Yeah, we will definitely incorporate that in, in BLM in the future. And uh, and for the more the other side of the 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 work, like like say trading off latency for throughput, something like that. Uh, trading off throughput for latency. Uh, we will we will be more cautious in that space. There are some techniques uh, over there, like speculative decoding. Uh, that's one like most very important and very impactful technique. And we are thinking about it, but we will be, uh, we'll implement the first set of techniques first and then think about the second set. Mm -hmm. And cool, yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you everyone. <laughs>